Hello and welcome. In this tutorial, we'll explore how to utilize the new CC5 HD characters along with the facial control tool in iClone, helping you take your animation experience to the next level. Let's get started. To begin, make sure you've installed the latest version of both Character Creator 5 and iClone so you can fully utilize all the new features. Once inside iClone 8, you'll notice new CC5 content packs available if CC5 is installed. For this tutorial, we'll mainly focus on the CC5 characters pack. Open the pack, and let's start by applying a CC5 character directly into our scene. With our CC5 character loaded, let's open the Modify panel. Here, you'll find the Sub-D Levels section, which controls the subdivision on the character's body. All new CC5 characters can be switched to higher subdivision levels if needed. Use Alt plus 2 to toggle the wireframe view in real time. Notice how lowering the subdivision reduces the polygon density, while increasing it adds more detail. Keep in mind, subdivision changes only affect the body of the character, not the clothing or accessories. By increasing the topology, you'll see a big improvement in the way muscles and wrinkles appear on these HD characters. CC5 also introduces new HD elements such as eyeballs and eyelashes that you can apply to your characters. Let's start with the eyes. Apply any HD eye asset and you'll be prompted to replace the existing ones. Right away, you'll notice the eyeballs now have much denser geometry, giving them a more natural and convincing shape. And of course, all of the material and texture parameters can still be customized. Under Material Lists, Select the Digital Human Eye Shader. From here, you can adjust the iris depth scale for a more dramatic look, enlarge the pupil size, or even change the iris color for a more stylized appearance. The Advanced menu also gives you access to dozens of fine-tuning options for even more control. The same concept applies to teeth as well. You can replace them with a new HD set, then adjust their material under the teeth shaders. For example, brighten up the teeth slightly, lower the desaturation to restore natural color, or tweak the roughness to make them shinier and more reflective. CC5 also introduces a brand new HD facial profile, fully optimized for realistic performance inside iClone. Every CC5 character comes with this HD facial profile already applied by default. To verify, go to Animation, Face Key. Here, you'll see the expanded set of facial morph sliders included with the CC5 HD profile. These additional controls allow for more intricate facial movements, especially around the eyes, mouth, and neck areas. In fact, there are now over 100 new morph sliders dedicated to facial animation. With these, expressions become more nuanced, lip sync more accurate, and overall performance much more natural. These upgrades are possible thanks to the corrective morphs built into the facial profile, ensuring that every subtle motion deforms smoothly and convincingly. To ensure that facial animations perform flawlessly, CC5 utilizes corrective morphs included in the HD facial profile. These corrective morphs are designed to detect unnatural or extreme facial deformations and automatically adjust them to more natural, believable shapes. In practice, this means that when anomalies occur during performance, over 120 corrective morph sliders will activate to prevent issues such as exaggerated shapes or mesh interpenetration around the eyes, mouth, and other sensitive areas. By default, the corrective expression feature is enabled for every CC5 HD character. This guarantees clean, natural results, no deformation problems around the eyes, mouth, or other facial regions. For a deeper dive into the HD facial profile, be sure to check out the dedicated tutorial linked in the description. To make facial animation editing easier, we can use the free HD Face Control plugin for iClone. Once installed through the hub, open it from the Plugins menu. The panel is divided into two sections, major controller sliders on the left and secondary facial tweaks on the right. Navigation is simple, use the middle mouse button to pan and scroll to zoom.
hovering over a slider will display its corresponding morph name. These controls allow precise adjustments, especially around the mouth and neck area. On the right-hand side, you'll also find mouth shape templates and additional tweak sliders. The character in our scene already has facial animation applied, and you'll notice the sliders moving as the animation plays. Open the timeline and make sure the expression track and its subtracks are visible. Then open the animation layer panel and create a new layer. This way, any edits are stored separately. To prevent interference from the base animation, enable display layer key values only, so the sliders reflect only the keys in the current layer. Now, adjustments like enlarging the eyes or raising the forehead will generate clean keys. And you can add zero keys before and after to limit their influence. You could also double click on the slider to reset. Purple sliders in the panel may appear inactive at first. That's because they only modify primary sliders that are already in use. For example, adjust the nose control first, then refine forehead wrinkles with the purple sliders. These subtle micro expressions add realism to the performance. The same approach applies to mouth shapes, where you can layer additional sliders, such as mouth open, for a stronger effect. As for the orange sliders, they function as compound controls that combine multiple individual sliders into one. When making adjustments with them, each of the underlying sliders doesn't just increase together, but will also decrease at certain points. This layered behavior helps create a much more natural mouth sticky effect, while also making it easier to control. In action, we can observe how the lips naturally stick to each other from the outside edges and gradually close toward the middle. Let's walk through an example to demonstrate. First, locate a point in the animation where the character's mouth is only slightly opened. Add keys to the sliders at this frame, then move forward in the timeline to a frame where the mouth is fully opened. At this point, simply double-click the slider to reset it. With just these three simple keys, we can produce a convincing lip-sticking effect in only a matter of seconds. The sliders on the right are mainly for fine-tuning. They can be keyed as well to enhance nuances in the performance. Below the fine-tuned sliders, you'll find the lip check shapes, which represent different mouth positions corresponding to various phonemes and pronunciations. These are useful for refining lip sync and making speech animation more accurate and natural. After animating the face, you can still fine-tune the strength of different facial areas afterward, which is a new feature introduced in iClone 8.6. Apply a facial animation and open the timeline, making sure both the motion and expression tracks are visible. Split the tracks, as strength adjustments can only be applied to the expression track. Because these adjustments affect the entire clip, cut the clip first to confine the area you want to modify. Right-click the clip and choose Facial Part Strength. For example, you can lower the strength of the brows area so they appear as subtle micro-expressions rather than exaggerated movements. Besides expressions, you can also adjust the head rotation. Cut the desired clip range and apply any previous adjustments first.
Then, open the panel and scroll down to the head strength slider. Reduce it to about 20% to soften the motion. If you notice snapping between clips, drag the top triangles on both sides of the clip to add blending. This smooths out the transition for a more natural result. And that's a wrap for this tutorial. Hopefully, you found it helpful. See you in the next one.